Hello fast trackers and welcome to another episode of the Life in the UK test part two where we're talking about the British Empire in the second part of its uh, colonial history. Uh, today's uh, lesson will cover some questions, we'll be covering the main presentation um, and again if you're, if you're struggling with the life in the UK test, you're not quite sure where to go, come and talk to us. We're teachers, we're the number one online trainers for the British citizenship exams. Uh, we do online classes, group classes, one-to-one -one classes and uh, you can look at the description below whatsapp us communicate with us uh, uh speak to us on uh, uh, our website check out our website there's more questions to practice and there's a full course which you can uh, enroll on and once you are in that course uh, you can train with a teacher and a teacher uh, helps you pass your test first time so without further ado get a cup of tea close the door kick everyone out or bring everyone in it's your choice put yourself put it on the big screen so everyone can watch but enjoy yourself as we go through the next part of our life in the uk test all right let's get straight to it all right ladies and gentlemen lesson number five a global power part two let's get straight into it when were women given the right to vote 1928 1828 1948 or 1882 when were women given the right to vote? 1928, 1828, 1948 or 1882? The correct answer is 1928. And again, the first time round, I'm going to do it as if you're in the real exam. So you guys can do it uh, by yourself. The second time round, right at the end of the training, I'm going to help you and show you some tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years. So let's get straight into it. What term can be related to women who campaigned for their legal rights to vote in the late 19th century and early 20th centuries? Nuggets, Bridgets, Suffragettes. What term can be related to women who campaigned for their legal rights to vote in the late 19th and early 20th centuries? Nuggets, Bridgets or Suffragettes? The correct answer is Suffragettes. Which statement is correct? The Industrial Revolution was the rapid development of industry in the 18th and 19th century. The Industrial Revolution was the rapid development of shoemaking in the 18th and 19th century. The correct answer is the Industrial Revolution was the rapid development of industry in the 18th and 19th centuries. Very good. Which two of the following were famous Victorians? Isambard Kingdom Brunel, Margaret Thatcher, Dylan Thomas or Florence Nightingale? Uh, which two of the f uh, following were famous uh, Victorians? Isambard Kingdom Brunel, Margaret Thatcher, Dylan Thomas or Florence Nightingale? The correct answer is Isambard Kingdom Brunel and Florence Nightingale. Which statement is correct? George and Robert Stevenson were famous pioneers of railway engines. George and Robert Stevenson were famous pioneers of agricultural changes. Which statement is correct? George and Robert Stevenson were famous pioneers of railway engines. George and Robert Stevenson were famous pioneers of agricultural changes. The correct answer is George and Robert Stevenson were famous pioneers of railway engines. Who was Florence Nightingale? Founder of modern nursing, founder of the internet, founder of care homes. Who was Florence Nightingale? Founder of modern nursing, uh, founder of the internet or founder of care homes? The correct answer is founder of modern nursing. Very good. Okay, after the potato famine in Ireland, where did many of the Irish people go? England and the USA, Germany and Italy, France and Belgium. After the potato famine in Ireland, where did many of the Irish people go? England and USA, Germany and Italy, France and Belgium. The correct answer is England and the USA. Good job. Rudyard Kipling wrote which book? Harry Potter, Jungle Book or The Of Mice and Men? Rudyard Kipling wrote which book? Harry Potter, The Jungle Book or Of Mice and Men? The correct answer is Jungle Book. Very good. And who wrote the famous poem If? Robert Burns, my favourite because it's Scottish, Robert Burns, Winston Churchill or Rudyard Kipling? Who wrote the famous poem If? Robert Burns, Winston Churchill or Rudyard Kipling? The correct answer is Rudyard Kipling. Very good. Where did the Boer War take place? South Africa, America, Germany or Pakistan? Where did the Boer War take place? South Africa, America, Germany or Pakistan? 
The correct answer is South Africa. What did the UK produce in the 19th century? Iron, coal, cotton, cloth. Copper, silver, metal, gold, petrol or soil. So what did the UK produce in the 19th century? Iron, coal, cotton, cloth. Copper, silver, metal, gold, petrol or soil. The correct answer is iron, coal, cotton, cloth. Very good. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about the Victorian age and this picture on the right hand side is of Queen Victoria. As you can see, very, very sad at this point because her husband had died and she never quite got over it. She was in mourning for 40 years. She loved her husband very much, of course. And she, um, um, she was the longest reigning queen until Queen Elizabeth uh, came along, Queen Elizabeth II, and she is the longest reigning queen at this point, 1837 to 1901. The British Empire at the time uh, had a lot of territory. Of course, you can see North America, um, 1897. No, that's not North America. That is North America. North America had already been lost. Canada, uh, of course, Britain, this little island, and then all Jamaica, all the Caribbean islands. Uh, there was a many. There's the Falkland Islands around here, uh, South Africa, Egypt. Um, this is. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't remember what country this is. It's Nigeria, I think. No. Is it? I'm so bad. I'm so sorry. Um, Zimbabwe, former Rhodesia? No. I'm so bad. I should have looked this up. But that's India. Um, that's Australia. And then every, pretty much every island in between Fiji is here somewhere. Um, but South Africa... And then many of the inner countries in the heart of South Africa. Cecil Rhodes, I believe, built a, a, a railway from here. But, of course, this is the British Empire. India, Australia and Africa, the continent of Africa, uh, had been colonised by this tiny island here. Um, so, from there, you had 400 million people in uh, the British Empire. 13 million people left Britain. 1870 to 1914, 120,000 Russian and Polish Jews came, um, and India and Africa were part of, or the continent of Africa were part of the British Empire. Um, but notice how none of this information has been highlighted in red. That's because none of it is important for your exam. There is no need to remember any of this at all. None of it's in your test. Uh, trade and industry, 1847, women and children working hours uh, was reduced to uh, 10 hours a day and there was better housing and transport. So what does this mean? It means that women and children were given um, the uh, restriction of working only 10 hours a day. Before that, they were working all hours a day. Uh, and there was better housing and transport in the British Empire after 1847 uh, because all the money that was coming into um, the British Empire meant that they could treat their people much, much, much better. And so Britain was a very nice place, not entirely nice, of course, but um, there was a lot of money rolling around in 1847. A lot of people had a lot of money and resources. George and Robert Stevenson in 1814 made the first train. These were two brothers and this is the first prototype of the train. You put the coal in the engine and it, and it moves and um, I think one of the brothers invented it and the other brother marketed it but I can't be 100% sure about that and again that's not on the test but they will ask you George and Robert Stevenson. These are these two people here and this is the the train that they made, uh, the first ever train. So these are the two people. Um, right, now we've got Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Uh, this happy chappy here with his top hat and his, uh, there's a lot of uh, iron, coal, not iron, coal, so iron, metal, shackles and stuff like that. Um, he was an engineer. He built tunnels, ships, bridges and railways. Just remember kingdom. In the exam, if you've got kingdom, uh, he, he was an engineer, so he made Kingdom, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Uh, so the Clifton Suspension Bridge is above Avant Gorge. So this here is above the Avant Gorge, uh, which means that um, the Clifton Suspension Bridge is, uh, is, a, is a wonder. It's a, well, it's not a wonder, but it is wonderful to look at. Hey, um, so uh, if you go, uh, it connects, uh, a, you know, very large... Uh, river uh, above a river from I believe it's 
um, the mainland England into Wales. Yes, a Clifton Suspension Bridge in Avon Gorge. I have to double check my details because, again, none of these things are really in the test. Um, the only thing that's really in the test is uh, this, um, like what did the English produce uh, or the UK produce in the uh, 19th century? Iron, coal, cotton cloth. So remember how we talked in the last lesson about how the Indian uh, cloth industry was destroyed uh, by the Industrial Revolution of England. Um, it was definitely, you know, completely wiped away. No one could really export to the level they were exporting. But you see here, uh, this is the cotton cloth that they had. They had iron uh, that was made from the coal that they burned. Uh, so they, they pulled loads of coal out of the ground, they made loads of iron, and they made loads of cotton cloth. Okay, Crimean War. Now this is definitely important. Um, it's really important to remember this because this was the time when a lot of soldiers died from gunshot wounds rather than actually being killed in war. The reason being is there was no uh, field medicine, there was no medicine in the field. They severely underestimate, uh, underestimated the, uh, the Russians, not because of the, the actual Russians themselves, but because of the weather of Russia. They sent a lot of soldiers into war without blankets, food, without the proper uh, like supplies, and a lot of soldiers died from gangrene. So imagine if you got shot in the arm, um, they take you back and they say, look man, we just got to chop your arm off, man, because we haven't really got the medicine here to help you right now. So it's either going to get gangrene and you're going to die or we chop your arm off. So that's how bad the Crimean War is. It literally was a very poorly planned war. Uh, they started giving away the Victorian Cross, and these are the soldiers at the time. Um, Florence Nightingale went to um, Turkey in the Crimean War. Uh, 1860, she made the Nightingale School for Training School for Nurses, and she is the founder of modern nursing. She was born in Italy. She is English. Now, the story of Florence Nightingale is a really, really uh, interesting one because she had a massive effect on how we looked at medicine. Prior to Florence Nightingale, there was no bedside manner. There was no cleaning of the clothes that the, um, the people who were uh, being um, in. If you were a patient, you wouldn't have your clothes clean. You wouldn't have bedside manner. You wouldn't have someone come and talk to you and look after you. You know, all the holistic things that make you better. You know, uh, you're keeping your spirits up, looking after you, making you feel better. She saw that and she started campaigning for it but more importantly she was dissuaded from going into the field of medicine uh, by her auntie and her mom uh, who wanted her to go away I think to go on an accountancy course I think it's an accountancy course I'm getting a lot of things wrong uh, today I can't remember a lot of the history of what they actually did but I'm pretty sure she was going to go away to Italy for an accounting course um, but in oh, to get married and instead she said no at the last minute uh, and then she went to Crimea and her family denounced her. And then when she got there, uh, she waited outside of the army barracks for like three months. They wouldn't let her in because she was a woman. Uh, they told her that she doesn't know what she's on about. And um, when she walked in, she was absolutely um, abhorred by what she saw. What she saw was prisoners lying in their own filth, dying. Uh, there was no clean environment for them to be in. Their clothes weren't clean. The doctor who was doing all of the uh, operations, his his surgical equipment wasn't sterilized. His his apron in which he was um, doing his work was caked in blood, so that when you hit it, it was it was like it was like a piece of cardboard. It was it was caked in so much blood. It was like cardboard. Um, and so she cleaned everyone up, she gave them all clean clothes, she looked after them, and she, she basically, you know, looked after Bedside Manor. And she then promoted this, and it became a staple of how medicine in Europe and, and the Western world was looked at. Obviously, all of the things that she was doing was, was found thousands and thousands of years ago in, in holistic medicine before, and it's just that Europe was very late in catching up with bedside manner, um, and, and, and you know it, it became a real thing later on, not early on. Um, and so this is it. So thank God for that. Thank God you know we have bedside manner now, and we look after patients with clean clothing and, and dressings and things like that. 
Uh, if you want to look, know more about Florence Nightingale, you can go online and look on YouTube. There's some really great documentaries about her life. I'm pretty sure I've butchered her entire life, but it helps you guys have a story and a story that tells you what her life was and why she's the founder of modern nursing. And that's enough for the exam. There is only one question in the exam that's about her. It's who is the founder of modern nursing, Florence Nightingale. And then a reversal of the question is, uh, who is Florence Nightingale? She's the founder of modern nursing. And who is the founder of modern nursing, Florence Nightingale? Two questions, two reverse questions. Potato famine. This is a really bad thing. Two thirds of farming potato uh, in Ireland. Uh, the, the famine. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Irish people love potatoes to the point that it made up a lot of the diet of, of, of Irish people uh, at that time in the 19th century. There was a huge famine that completely destroyed the crops of the potatoes and destroyed families. People died and there was no help from the English and that is a fact. There was no support from the English. The English said, let them die. Let them, let them die. We don't, we don't care about helping them. Um, and the English still wonder why Ireland wants to be free and why they want a full island, why Scotland wants to be free and why Wales I don't think they really care about the annexation. I'm, I don't know. But I know Scotland wants separation. I know Ireland wants separation. It's like things like this. This is really important in the history and the identity because a lot of Irish people then left. They went to USA. They went to England, specifically Liverpool. And they, you know, th that's their heritage. They had to leave due to famine. And it was even as so far as uh, there was people in India, uh, princes who knew, well, one prince in particular who found out that, hey, these guys are starving. And he sent boats and boats and boats of uh, rice to um, uh, Ireland and said, here, this, you know, his rice, you know, you can, you can use it. And the English turned them away at the port and says, no, 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 take it back. They don't need this. Um, you can't give it, take it back. Um, and the prince said, look, you know, these people need something to eat. Like, I, we have excess food here. Take the food. Help them. They said, no, take it back. Um, and so the potato famine is really, um, a, a, it, it's a turning point in terms of Ireland's um, history. Uh, and it's remembered, it's taught in schools. And it comes up in the exam. Uh, what you know? What was the potato famine? It was a really bad time in Ireland where a lot of people uh, died. A secondary question that comes up similar to this is what is the troubles? That was where there was a lot of fighting in Ireland and then a lot of people died. Um, and one thing that you can remember about the uh, capital of um, Northern Ireland is it's called Belfast. Now fasting is what people go through when they can't eat. So if you know about the potato famine where people couldn't eat and you've got Northern Ireland, which is the capital Belfast, you're fasting, you can't eat. So those are the three uh, things that come from this particular idea in the book. Three questions and three answers. Who, what was the potato famine? It's where a lot of people died in Ireland. Uh, what is the troubles? Uh, this came later. It was where a lot of people died uh, due to the... Um, uh, due to uh, bombings uh, and uh, the IRF, uh, but they don't talk about the IRF in the book. <laughs> so they don't talk about the IRF in the book. They just say this is, it was it was it was a political time. Um, uh, and then the last thing is, um, you know, uh, what is the capital of Ireland? Northern Ireland is Belfast because people couldn't eat food. Okay, so um, next stage is about voting. So there was more. Uh, people demand to vote, so more people demanded the vote. And in 1864, there was the Reform Act. The reform is to change something, and more people can vote, but still not women. That came later in 1928. Until 1817, women gave everything to their husband, everything. Women had no right to own property, no right to vote, no right for anything. Very troubling time for women. Uh, girls, women, elderly, very troubling times, um, only because there was no voice. We're going to talk about the voice now. You have Emmeline Pankhurst, to 1858 to 1928, heroically uh, fought to get the vote amongst rights to um, basic equality between men and women. 
and they were looked at as troublemakers. They were called the suffragettes, the women who suffered. And any good woman, any good woman who is loyal to her family and to her country, and of course her husband and family would not act in such a manner. Um, 1928 women were given the right to vote and that was directly after the war. Now, um, th now one of the things that you're going to get in your test is who are the suffragettes? There's, a, there's about three, four questions here. Who are the suffragettes? The suffragettes are women who campaign for women's rights to vote. They are women who suffered, suffragettes. Who is the leader of the suffragettes? Emmeline Pankers. When did women get the vote? 1928. But then there's a couple of, there's two caveats. When did the women get the first vote? Uh, 1928, and then they got another vote in 1969. So 1920, 1928, or 1921, I think it was, they got the vote at the age of 30. 1928, they got the vote at the age of uh, 21, the same as men. And 1969, they got the vote at the age of 30. No, <laughs> they got the vote at the age of 18. Uh, that's the correct answer. Um, uh, but, but the main one that comes up in the exam is, when did women get the vote? 1928. When did women get the vote the same age as men? 1969. And the suffragettes were the leaders of the, um, the campaign. Um, and this happened after World War One. So 1914 to 1918 was World War One. And again, get a pen and paper. I will be covering this in the next lesson. You may as well write it down now in your notebook. 1914 to 1918 was World War One. 1939 to 1945 was World War Two. Now, at this time, when men went to war, majority of them died in France, overseas, um, uh, when they died, the men, husbands, brothers, sons, fathers, they all died. So therefore, you start to have a lot of money and property and and um, um, you, you have a lot of, of, of things that need to be handed over to somebody. But who are they handed over? Only women have survived. So there needed to be a legal uh, um, change in the system. And they said it was because of the women's contribution during World War I in the factories. Yes, that's true. But it was also because the men had died and therefore there was no one to inherit all the, 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 the left behind wealth uh, or debt or uh, uh, estates or properties. So women were given the right to vote and property and therefore you, you, you start to see how society has changed due to war. Um, so that's what comes from Emmeline Pankers. Let's talk about the Boer War, the British versus the Boers in South Africa. Now you're going to want to hear about this. Diamonds. Do you guys know what diamonds are? That's, you know, a woman's best friend? Sure. Uh, what they love to put in other things? Sure. Um, diamonds. What they love to put in jewelry? Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, diamonds are so um, important that uh, England sent 800,000 troops to South Africa where they had recently just discovered diamonds. When they had discovered diamonds, the English claimed South Africa as theirs. Now, prior to this, um, the South African uh, con uh, country was, oh, well, the, the, the land of South Africa was um, colonized by the Dutch uh, and they then came into the Afrikaans. Prior to even that, you have the indigenous people of that land who do not value diamonds at all. And they don't look at land in the same way as it's a property. They look at land as it's for everybody and therefore we, we communally live on this land and it's, you know, Mother Nature and we, 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 we all are brothers and sisters and, and we will fight. Sure, we will fight, but, you know, good God, not with guns. Um, but we're, but none of that is on your test. The only thing that's on your test is what is the Boer War? The Boer War was the war between South Africa and the British. And uh, that's it. That's literally it. That's the only thing you need to remember for the test. But if you want to remember what the Boer War really was, it was a time where the British went to South Africa and they got um, 
well, they had to reform their, their military practices because um, they wore red uniforms in South Africa, which made it real, real, real easy to be spotted by the Dutch who were using a guerrilla warfare, the same type of guerrilla warfare that the Viet Cong and Vietnamese uh, uh, used against the Americans and they even took inspiration by, by reading stories about how they had dealt with the British exactly in the same way. To the point that um, they, uh, the Boers um, used to use horses and pistoliers to uh, do hit and run tactics on the British that were extremely effective. Um, and then the British used an even more effective, um, uh, even more effective tactic of kidnapping uh, and uh, uh, keeping hostage all of the families of the Boers in the first ever known uh, concentration camps. So the British were the first to make concentration camps, put all of the families into concentration camps and said, look, they're going to die in these concentration camps unless you come out of the forest and sign this deal and stop fighting. And that's exactly what happened. The Boers came out, they signed a deal, they stopped fighting, and um, obviously every every other atrocity in between was wiped under the table. And then the um, English blew the biggest hole in South Africa for diamonds. That the, that's the biggest man-made hole ever. Google it. If you want to Google diamonds, South Africa, hole, you will see the biggest hole that any human has ever made with dynamite and it's massive just for getting the diamonds out and that's the story of uh, the British involvement in South Africa and the Boer War. So hopefully you can remember that and the best way to remember that is this. What was the Boer War? It was the war between the British and South Africa, O and O and also a big O in the ground, a big hole for the diamonds that they blew out. So Bua, South Africa, and O for the big hole that they blew in the ground for the diamonds. But they won't talk about diamonds in the test, they just say Bua was in South Africa. Right, okay, so changes in the British Empire. At this point now, the British Empire changed into the Commonwealth. What is the Commonwealth? Well, if we can see here in this picture, United We Stand. That's wonderful. Granada, New Zealand, Tanzania, Tasmania, sorry, the Straits, Malta, India, the Cape Colony, and Australia. The Commonwealth is the former colonies of the British Empire, uh, but now they have self autonomy. However, they still pay to the Crown. But it's a way that the British Empire can stick around, still utilize the land and military access, yet they just let the, uh, the, those countries uh, rule themselves, but they still answer to the, um, the, the Queen and to the Crown and to the British Empire. Um, I would imagine that it's more like um, vassal states than it is Commonwealth. Uh, but you can Google these things. It doesn't really come up in the test anymore. Uh, but this will not come up in the test anymore either. Actually, no, this will. Rudyard Kipling will come up in the test. Uh, what did he write? He wrote The Jungle Book. Uh, he born and lived in India from 1865 to 1936. Uh, and he wrote The Jungle Book and The Just So Stories. Uh, they, he also wrote the uh, poem If. And it's, uh, it's an okay poem. It's not amazing. I'll be honest. Look, I'm putting my hands up, guys. I've read the poem, it's not Shakespeare, it's okay, it's not that great. You can Google that as well, read the poem if, and let me know if you think it's a good poem. I think it's a bit basic, but everyone loved it, so whatever, you know, I wasn't born at that time, but you know, it's, it's okay, it's not that great. All right, let's go straight into it. This time, I am going to help you to remember all the essential information to make sure that you don't have to go off uh, and learning loads of things. I'm just going to show you exactly what I would teach uh, to help you pass uh, and learn this information. When were women given the right to vote? 1928, 1828, 1948 or 1882. Now remember guys, it's after World War I, 1914 to 1918. So this is 1928. 
because it's after the First World War, before the Second World War. The First World War was 1914 to 1918. The Second World War was 1939 to 1945. So whatever date comes between 1918 and 1940, 1939 is your answer. We've got 1928. That's how you remember. What term can be related to women who campaigned for their legal rights to vote in the late 19th century and early 20th centuries? Nuggets, Bridgets, Suffragettes. The correct answer is Suffragettes. Now, how do we remember this? Now, again, I encourage you guys not to read the whole writing. If you want to be a true fast tracker, you want to just pick out the key terms. That's the smart way of approaching this exam, not to memorize a whole chunk. You're just going to uh, stress yourself out. Women, legal rights, suffragettes, done. Because no matter which way they word the question, they still have to use these key terms, right? And these are the key terms. Now you know what they know and they know, they don't know what you know. Therefore, you know how to get your citizenship exam before they know what's going on. All right, let's keep it up. Which statement is correct? The Industrial Revolution was the rapid development of industry in the 18th and 19th century. The Industrial Revolution was the rapid development of shoemaking in the 18th and 19th century. Easy. Have a read. Take your time. I'll wait. Which of the following statements is correct? The Industrial Revolution was the rapid development of industry in the 18th and 19th century. Industry, industrial, um, factories, okay? Factory is industrial industry. Make the two connections, you're good to go. Which two of the following were famous Victorians? Isambard Kingdom Brunel, Margaret Thatcher, Dylan Thomas or Florence Nightingale? Again, take your time. Have a think. Who did we discuss? One person was standing next to some chains and another woman went off to Turkey despite her mother and her auntie telling her not to. One person made the Avon Gorge, the bridge, and another person made modern nursing. Who are we talking about, ladies and gentlemen? That's right. Florence Nightingale is Bard Kingdom Brunel. That's the best way to remember this. Victorian, like Queen Victoria, she was in a kingdom and she had nightingales, which is a bird. Victoria, Queen Victoria, was in a kingdom and she had nightingales, which was a bird. This is the easiest way to remember this question uh, and these answers. And this definitely comes up. It does, it does come up a lot in the test. It, re it really comes up this one. Which statement is correct? George and Robert Stevenson were famous pioneers of railway engines. George and Robert Stevenson were famous pioneers of agricultural changes. Now remember what agriculture means. Agriculture means farming and railway means, well, it does mean railways. So these two brothers made the first train, the choo-choo train. Who is Florence Nightingale? Oh my God, you just had this. Founder of modern nursing, founder of the internet, founder of care homes. The correct answer is, fast trackers, founder of modern nursing. You just remember the story, guys. That's the best way to do it. Just figure out the story. After the potato famine in Ireland, where did many of the Irish people go? England and the USA, Germany and Italy, France and Belgium. The correct answer is England and USA. Because of the potato famine, they went to Boston, they went to Liverpool. Of course, other places as well. Rudyard Kipling wrote which book? Harry Potter, The Jungle Book of Mice and Men. The correct answer is The Jungle Book. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, he wrote Jungle Book and then the favorite poem, If. Cool, I guess. I mean, Jungle Book is cool. Poem If? Ah, I'm not a big fan. Who wrote the poem If? Robert, Robert Burns, the Scotsman? Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister? Or Rudyard Kipling, the guy who wrote the poem If? Yeah, you guys knew this already. Well done. Well done. You got this. Fantastic. Where did the Boer War take place? South Africa, America, Germany or Pakistan? The correct answer is South Africa. Now remember, guys, look. 
I told you about that giant hole the English and the British uh, blew up in the ground after they took over South Africa. This here is O, South Africa, O for Bua, and O for the big hole they blew in the ground. South Africa, O for Bua, and O for the big hole. What did the UK produce in the 19th century? Iron, coal, cotton or cloth? Copper, silver, metal, gold, petrol, soil. So what did the UK produce in the 19th century? Iron, coal, cotton or cloth? That's right. They had all those things because they had industrial revolution. Okay, fast trackers. So you've had another episode. You've got a little bit more knowledge. You've got a little bit more confidence and you're feeling great about yourself. I'm so happy for you. I know you guys are going to do great. And whatever we teach you, please teach to others. It's just going to make everyone a lot happier, a lot more relaxed and a lot better. So Fast Trackers, my name is Rahul Ghazni. I'm the director of Fast Track Training. Please leave a like, a subscribe and hit the bell icon and visit our website in the description below for more information. And you can practice these tests on our website. We're very happy for you to come along. And if you'd like a full course, just get in touch with us, WhatsApp us, talk to a teacher or go on the site and enroll straight away. And we'll get you past your exam very, very quickly. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Fast Trackers, and we will see you on the next episode of Life in the UK Test. Take care. Bye-bye.